This video is for dental hygiene courses which require a position paper and annotated bibliography. We'll cover how to find resources using library databases. We'll also talk about citing sources in APA format and creating an annotated bibliography. To get started, go to the library website. Find the library in the My FSC portal in the left column. You'll be prompted to enter your Farmingdale username and password to access library materials. Our contact information is on the right side. If you have any questions about finding resources or citing sources, use the Ask a Librarian link and someone will get back to you shortly. At the top of the library homepage, there's a search bar that searches many databases at one time. You may use this search to find scholarly peer-reviewed articles for your assignment. We'll go over what peer-reviewed articles are before we start searching. When completing assignments, such as a research paper or presentation, there are many different types of sources that you may use to get information. You will need to show how your ideas relate to the ideas of others. Different types of sources include many kinds of articles, as well as books, websites, government documents, videos, audio, images, and more. There are a variety of different types of articles that can be used to find information. We will talk about the differences between scholarly, peer-reviewed articles, popular articles, and articles from trade journals. We'll cover what they are, how to identify them, and when to use them as sources for your assignments. We'll start by talking about scholarly, peer-reviewed articles. Articles in scholarly journals are high-quality resources that are both written by experts and reviewed by experts. Typically, you'll use peer-reviewed articles to support your arguments because of their high quality. The purpose of scholarly peer-reviewed articles is to communicate research findings and scholarly ideas, and to educate readers. Authors of these articles are experts, including scholars and researchers, such as your professors. Authors' credentials are usually listed, including professional degrees, such as a PhD or MD, as well as the institutions where the authors work, such as a college, research institution, or hospital. The audience for scholarly articles usually includes other specialists in the subject area, researchers, and students. The scope of coverage for academic articles is typically very narrow and focuses on specific areas within a subject. If you're interested in a broad topic overview, you might refer to encyclopedia articles instead. The review process for these articles is called peer review. In order to be published, authors submit articles to journals to be reviewed. Articles are carefully reviewed by other experts in that particular field. The reviewing experts may suggest changes and recommend to the editor of the journal whether or not to publish the article. This process can be time consuming and it may take months for an article to be published. Peer reviewed articles include extensive citations that document the source of their information. References allow the reader to easily see where the author got their information. This lends credibility to the source because facts can be verified. References also let the reader expand their research process because they may consult the sources that were cited in the article. The format of scholarly peer-reviewed articles is typically organized to include an abstract or summary, a literature review, and depending on the type of research, sections for methodologies, results, and conclusions. In terms of the appearance of these articles, they are mostly text with some tables and charts. There are few graphics or illustrations unless they are relevant to the article. There are also no advertisements. The language of academic articles is technical and uses the specialized jargon of the field. Also, peer-reviewed articles are usually longer than popular articles and are typically over five pages in length. Here are some examples of academic journals. While academic journals include peer-reviewed articles that discuss original research, they might also include other types of articles such as book reviews, opinion pieces, and news items, which are not considered to be scholarly articles. In contrast to scholarly sources, popular sources are less formal and are not necessarily written for scholars or students. They include magazine and newspaper articles, and they can be useful for getting ideas for a topic and for background information. Unlike scholarly articles, the audience for popular articles is usually the general public rather than scholars and students. Popular articles usually cover a broad variety of interest stories from different subjects that might refer to research conducted by other people, but they do not actually contain the original research themselves. These articles usually provide summaries of topics and background information. The review process for popular articles is significantly less than scholarly articles. Popular articles may be reviewed by editors who may not have special knowledge of the subject matter. Because popular articles include news and magazine articles, the writing and review turnaround time is frequent and may be daily, weekly, or monthly. 
This is an important distinction between scholarly articles which require much more time to be reviewed by experts and edited before publication. Another difference between scholarly and popular articles is that popular articles rarely include citations. Because of this, the reader might not know the sources where the author found their information. Popular articles' appearance also features extensive advertising and colorful covers for marketing. The language used is easy to read, little technical language is used, and specialized terms are often defined. The length of these articles is usually shorter than scholarly articles and can be about 200 words to a few pages. Here are some examples of popular sources. Trade publications are another type of source that you will find in library databases. These can be professional magazines, newsletters, or online publications written by professionals working in a particular field. Their purpose is to provide news, cover trends in the field, discuss opinions, interview leaders, review products, and provide professional support to people working in the field. Articles may be written by members of the profession, journalists, and researchers. Technical language is used, the articles are usually brief, and the publications contain ads. Trade and professional literature resemble scholarly literature, but the content is different because they do not contain research articles. You're going to use peer-reviewed articles for your position paper and annotated bibliography. We're going to use the search on the library website to look for peer-reviewed articles on dental hygiene topics. I'm going to use an example topic of pregnancy and oral health. You might see a prompt to sign in if you're not signed in already. Sign in with your Farmingdale username and password in order to have full access to search features, such as saving results to your account. You're already signed in if you see your name on the top right. Notice the amount of search results at the top. If you search a broad topic, you're going to get a high number of results that span many topics. Instead, you should brainstorm different keywords for a specific topic. In our example, the keywords we're going to start with are pregnancy and oral health. You should also brainstorm other keywords before you search and during your search. In our example, some different keywords we might use include prenatal in addition to pregnancy. You could also make the search term oral health more specific by focusing on subtopics such as periodontal disease. It's helpful to use the advanced search option on the right. Enter each keyword or group of keywords on a different line. We could start with pregnancy and oral health. We see there are many results, so we might want to limit our results further. You can use the word or to include results from two similar keywords, such as pregnancy or prenatal. Now our search is pregnancy or prenatal and periodontal disease. It's important to note that research is a process. Search terms can evolve as you start consulting articles. Research is not only searching, then reading, and then writing. You'll go back and forth between these steps as you learn more about your topic and narrow your search. Upon looking at your results, you might notice additional subtopics that you might like to include in your research. For example, I saw the topic of preterm birth in my results, and I'm going to add that as a keyword in my search. Add additional keywords by selecting Add a new line. I'm going to make our search even more specific by adding the search term of preterm birth because I might want to research if periodontal disease in pregnant women leads to preterm birth. So our search now is pregnancy or prenatal and periodontal disease and preterm birth. You can see that we have fewer results because our search is more focused now. When searching, it's important to brainstorm different keywords in order to get the results you want. Searching is a process, so your keywords can change as you discover articles that interest you. Once you enter keywords, add limiters to filter out the results you don't want. Go to the Refine Your Results section in the left column. If you don't see any filters here, select the Expand My Results box. Under Material Type, you'll see the types of resources in your results list, such as articles and books. The Availability section includes the Peer Reviewed Journals filter. You'll want to select this to limit your results to peer-reviewed articles, which are required for this assignment. Next, there's a publication date filter. Use this to restrict your results to only certain years of publication. For this assignment, we can select the last five years. It is also helpful to look at the subject filter, which narrows the main topics that are in our results list. 
You can use these subjects to get ideas for keywords and narrowing your search. In our example topic, we might be interested in the subjects premature birth and birth weight, in addition to some others. Once you have applied limiters, begin to review articles in your results list. Click on the title to see the article record, which provides information about the article, such as title, authors, journal name, date of publication, volume, issue number, and page numbers. You'll need these details for your citations. At the bottom of this page, there's also a description of the article or an abstract, which is good to read in order to know if the article will be helpful for your research or not, so you don't have to waste time opening the article. To see the article, go to the View Online section. There might be multiple links listed here for different databases. This should all bring you to the article. If you see a link that says Interlibrary Loan, that means we don't have the full text of the article, but we can request it from another library. The link brings you to Interlibrary Loan, where you can request the article. Log in with your Farmingdale username and password. If it's the first time you're using Interlibrary Loan, you'll also fill out some contact information. You'll be notified when the article is available for you. There are also helpful options for citing and saving articles on this page. In the citation section, select APA to see the citation for the article. This is a useful option, but you need to check these citations to make sure they're correct because they sometimes include mistakes. Pay special attention to capitalization here. The next option is a permalink. Use this link to send the article to yourself or someone else because the URL at the top of the page is not permanent and that will break over time. There's also an option to email the article. Another very helpful option is to save resources to your favorites. Check to make sure you're signed in at the top of the page. Then use the thumbtack option on the right to add an article to your favorites. Select the thumbtack at the very top right of the page to see your favorites, which will be saved here over time. Anytime you're logged in to the library website, you'll be able to access these resources. You can also save a search query to your favorites, so you don't need to enter all the keywords and limiters every time you are researching for this project again. This was an overview of using the main search on the library website, but there are also some other ways to search. Back at the library homepage, there's a section for research guides. The dental hygiene guide lists databases and other resources that are useful for dental hygiene research. Under the articles and databases section, Academic Search Complete is a useful database for many subjects. The next databases, Medline and Science Direct, contain health sciences research, including dental hygiene content. Searching these databases is similar to searching from the library homepage. Enter keywords, select search, then apply limiters, including type of resource, date range, and subject. Select the full text link to see the article. If you see a link that says find full text, that means you'll need to request the article through interlibrary loan. It's a good idea to start your research early so you have time to use interlibrary loan. These databases also have options for saving and citing articles. It might be helpful to search these individual databases in addition to searching from the library homepage. Sometimes searching from the library homepage can be overwhelming because it provides so many results on many different topics. Try searching both ways to get the resources you need. Next, we're going to talk about citing sources, including why it's important to cite and how to cite in the seventh edition of APA format. To plagiarize is to steal or pass off the ideas or words of another as your own. Plagiarism may occur in a number of ways, using words or ideas from a source without giving credit, failing to put a quotation in quotation marks, giving incorrect information about the source of a quotation, changing words but copying the sentence structure of a source without giving credit, copying so many words or ideas from a source that it makes up the majority of your work, whether you give credit or not, and self-plagiarizing, such as using a paper you wrote for one class in a different class. You can see that plagiarism may be much more subtle than copying a friend's paper or copying directly from a source. Failing to properly cite sources can also be considered to be plagiarism. When you use citations, you provide the source of your information by giving credit to the original author. 
The reader of your paper should be able to see exactly where you found the information used for your assignment. Citing sources is required both when you directly quote a source and when you paraphrase a source. Direct quotations involve incorporating another person's exact words into your own writing. Using a source's exact words requires a pair of quotation marks around the direct quote to signal that these words are not your own. Paraphrasing or rewording involves putting a passage from a source into your own words. Paraphrasing and summarizing also require citations. Even though the information will be in your own words, you still need to cite the source of your information. If there is no citation for information or ideas that are not your own, it is considered plagiarism. The use of summaries, paraphrases, and quotations are often combined in writing. Don't overuse direct quotes. Be sure that you have a good reason to include a direct quotation when you decide to do so. In this class, you'll need to cite your sources in APA format for your position paper and annotated bibliography. Next, we'll cover how to create in-text citations and citations for your reference list. We'll also talk about how to format your paper in APA citation style. In-text citations are found in the body of your paper. Anytime you include information that is not your own, you need to include an in-text citation. APA in-text citations include the author's last name, followed by a comma, then the year of publication. There are two ways to use in-text citations. The first is to put the citation at the end of the sentence, where the whole citation is in parentheses. In this case, you'll write a statement that includes information from a source. That means information that is not your own. Then, you include your in-text citation. This is an open parenthesis, the author's last name, a comma, the year of publication, you close the parenthesis, then you put a period to end the sentence. Note that the period is after the citation, so the citation is considered to be part of the sentence. The second way to write your in-text citation is to include it within your sentence instead of at the end. In this case, you would include the author's name within the sentence, directly followed by the year of publication in parentheses. The author date template for in-text citations is used when you are paraphrasing. Paraphrasing means you are writing in your own words without directly quoting the material. If you directly quote the material using the source's exact words and quotations, you will also need to include the page number in your citation by listing P period and the page number. If you mention the author's name in the sentence followed by the year, the page number will still be at the end of the sentence. There are also a number of rules for how to list authors depending on the amount of authors. If the material you are citing has two authors, you need to include both authors' last names. Use an ampersand when the citation is at the end of the sentence, and use the word end when the author's names are written in the sentence. If the material you are citing has three or more authors, list only the first author's name followed by et al, period, comma, and then the year of publication. Et al is a Latin phrase that means end others, and it replaces the other author's names. Pay attention to where the period and comma go for this. Use et al every time you cite a source with three or more authors, even in the first in-text citation. If the material you are citing has no author, you might use the organization as the author. For example, your resource might be written by a government agency. Depending on the resource, you could also use the material title in place of the author. Also, if the material you are citing has no date, such as some web pages, use the abbreviation n period d period for no date in place of the year. Please note that your in-text citations must correspond to a citation in your reference list at the end of your paper. The in-text citations provide a small amount of information about the resource, but the reference list is where the full citations are listed and those contain more details. The author that is listed in your in-text citation must be the first item that appears in your full citation in the reference list. For more details on creating in-text citations, you can refer to in-depth resources such as Purdue OWL, the online writing lab from Purdue University. This website is a useful tool to refer to when creating APA citations. The reference list is found at the end of your paper. The references listed on this page provide detailed information for each source used in your paper. While your in-text citation contains the author, date, and sometimes a page number, the citations in your reference list contain much more information. Anyone reading your paper should be able to easily find the resources you consulted by looking at the citations in your reference list. 
Each source that is cited as an in-text citation must appear in your reference list, and each source cited in the reference list must appear as an in-text citation in your paper. First, let's identify where you will find the information needed for your citations. You'll need the title of the article and the authors. Other information you need is typically at the top or bottom of the article. You'll see the journal title. This is the name of the journal where the article is published. You'll see the year of publication and the volume and issue numbers. These show exactly when the article was published. The volume always comes before the issue number and sometimes there is no issue number. You'll also need to include the page numbers and the DOI if your article has one. DOI stands for Digital Object Identifier and it's a unique identifier specific to each article. These details are needed in your reference list citations so the reader of your paper can locate the exact resource you used. Journal article citations follow this format, author last name, comma, first and middle name initials. If there are multiple authors, also include their names in the same format. After the author is the year of publication in parentheses, period. Then comes the title of the article in sentence case, the title of the journal, italicized in title case, comma, the volume number, still in italics, then in parentheses and non-italics is the issue number, comma, and the page range, period. If the article has a DOI, it should be listed as a hyperlink that begins with HTTPS, colon, and two forward slashes. It is okay to use either the default settings for hyperlinks in your word processor, which are usually blue and underlined, or plain text that is not underlined. If the article has no DOI and is published in a database, don't include a URL or any database information. There are a few exceptions to this, such as when articles are only accessible in one particular database. If the resource is only available in one specific database, then include the database name in italics and the date you accessed it and a URL. If the article has no DOI and is published on a website, include the URL. Web pages you might cite include government websites. If there is no individual author, use the agency responsible for the web page as the author. Provide a date for the web page if possible. You should look for a date that pertains to the specific content you are citing rather than the website as a whole. If there is no date listed, use the abbreviation N period D period for no date. Then italicize the title of the web page and end the reference with the URL. Follow a similar format when citing a non-government website where the organization is the author. In this case, you don't need to include the site name after the title of the web page in order to avoid repetition. Lastly, if you are citing a web page that has an individual author, list that person as the author. Then follow the same format including the date, the italicized title of the web page, the website name, and the hyperlinked URL. Remember that the name or phrase that is listed at the beginning of each reference list citation must correspond to what is listed in your in-text citations. This is the case regardless of whether the author is an individual person or an organization. For more examples of how to cite other types of resources in APA format, you might refer to the APA style website or Purdue OWL, the online writing lab from Purdue University. The seventh edition of APA format has distinctions between student papers and professional papers. Students should use the student version unless requested otherwise by your instructor. We'll talk about the student version of APA papers here. Papers in APA format include sans serif fonts such as 11 point Calibri, 11 point Arial, or 10 point Lucida sans Unicode. Papers can also include serif fonts such as 12 point Times New Roman, 11 point Georgia, or 10-point computer modern. In general, double space all parts of an APA style paper. Don't add extra space before or after paragraphs. Use one inch margins on every side of the page. Align the text of an APA style paper to the left margin and leave the right margin uneven. Indent the first line of each paragraph a half inch from the left margin. This is automatically done in word processing programs or you may use the tab key. Let's start formatting the title page of your paper. Insert a page number in the top right corner of your header. In Microsoft Word, go to Insert, Page Number, Top of Page, and select Option 3, which shows the number on the right. You could also double-click the top of the page, which has an option for inserting a page number. In Google Docs, go to Insert, Page Numbers, and select the option that shows the number at the top right of every page. 
The page number is the only required part of the header. Student papers do not need to include a running head unless requested by your instructor. The main part of the title page includes the paper title, author name and affiliation, course, instructor, and the paper due date. The paper title should be placed three to four lines down from the top of the title page. Center it and type it in bold font. Capitalize major words of the title. Place one double space blank line between the paper title and the author name. Center your name on its own line. On the next line, write the author affiliation, which is the department name and name of the college separated by a comma. Next is the course number, colon, course name. Then list the name of the instructor. The last line on the title page is the assignment due date. All of these lines should be double spaced. On the next page, include the title of the paper again, centered and in bold at the top of the page. Then begin your paper. At the end of your paper, the reference list will be on the last page. At the top of the page, the word references will be bold and centered. References are listed alphabetically by the first item that appears in each citation. References will be double spaced with no extra spaces between each one. Also, each reference has a hanging indent. This means that the first line of each reference starts at the left margin. If the reference continues onto additional lines, those lines are indented a half inch. Word processing programs usually don't allow for the additional lines to be indented using the tab key, so you will need to select the hanging indent option. In Microsoft Word, select the lines that you want to indent, then go to line and paragraph spacing. Go to line spacing options, then under indentation, special, select hanging. In Google Docs, again, select the lines that you want to indent, then go to format, align and indent, indentation options, and under special indent, select hanging. For more information on formatting a paper in APA citation style, you might refer to the APA style website and Purdue OWL, the online writing lab from Purdue University. These websites provide more details, including APA sample papers. The last thing we are going to talk about is an annotated bibliography. An annotated bibliography is the same as your reference list with the addition of annotations under each source. Your assignment is for an evaluative annotated bibliography. This means that you will write an annotation, which is a short paragraph under each source that provides a description and a critical evaluation of the source. Describe each source by addressing questions such as who wrote the document, what the document discusses, when and where the document was written, why the document was produced, and how it was provided to the public. Because this is an evaluative annotated bibliography, you are also going to critically assess the work for accuracy, relevance, and quality. You might consider these questions and example answers. What is the material? What is the work about? What is the purpose of the work? Who is the intended audience? Who are the authors and what are their qualifications? What is the authority of the source? Are there any clear biases? What are the deficiencies or limitations of the work? And what are the strengths of the work? These annotations can help you learn about your topic and decide if a specific source will be useful for your assignment. They focus on description and evaluation. Formatting an annotated bibliography should look like your reference list with an annotation under each reference. They should be alphabetized. The only text that is flush left is the author's last name in the citation. All other text should be indented, including the annotations. Each annotation should be a new paragraph below its reference entry, and it should be indented a half inch from the left margin without an additional indentation. Remember that librarians are available to assist you during all open hours. Please don't hesitate to contact us.